good afternoon everyone uh, for this final session of uh, national seminar on emerging trends in construction industry and i welcome uh, our speaker today uh, mugul surajuddin who is currently working as an assistant technical uh, assistant technical service manager in uh, uh, walker chemic india private limited mumbai and uh, sir is uh, currently working in uh, waker chemi india private limited mumbai technical center and he is responsible for all technical services customer training and application development and uh, sir is a civil engineering graduate with a masters by research in construction materials from indian institute of technology iit madras chennai and uh, without further delay i would like to uh, ask you sir to end the session yes Before yes thank you yeah. Yeah. thank you thank you very much for the wonderful introduction so uh, i guess all the audience are btech graduates am i right yes sir most of them are graduates yes, as well as faculties are there now acha uh, faculties as well okay fine i don't concentrate much on the faculty you people are uh, well versed with all the things that are happening in the industry but i want some uh, volunteers uh, i uh, it would be uh, helpful for me to interact with them and then uh, make the session interactive session instead of just me presenting something and then leaving leaving it after an hour so hope i will have uh, a volunteers from the students to interact with me so to he has like uh, mr vignesh has given a wonderful introduction about me so i am basically a civil engineer like you people and i i graduated in the year 2018 like i started in 8, 2008 and then i graduated in 2012 and then i completed my masters in iit madras and from then i am working so i have started my career uh, with r and d doing research in uh, cement and uh, concrete after that i worked in aditya billa science and technology center uh, for 3 years and then uh, i have moved to wakar so i am working with wakar from past 3 years so wakar is basically a construction polymer company and uh, it's uh, more than 100 years old company and then it has uh, it's basically a polymer producer and I, otherwise we can say it as a binder producers and it has four divisions so one segment is polymer and the bio solutions polysilicons and silicons and uh, like we know polymer goes in everything from the day we start and the day we end so we go it goes in almost in all the products that we use and that all the products that we see around so and my my uh, like where i am focusing mostly is on the construction applications so we use polymers in many construction applications like tile adhesives flooring applications paints block jointing mortar tile grouts concrete and then plaster repair mortars and then if you have to do any surface treatments and these are all the applications where we use polymer so first thing before i uh, start getting into the further slides i would like uh, someone to help me out to a uh, definition of dry mix what is exactly a dry mix uh, definition of dry mix can someone uh, unmute yourself and then give me a definition of dry mix so what does the word dry mix say so do i have volunteers no no one no one would like to interact with me okay fine uh, so dry basically dry mix dry mix it's very clear from the definition itself it is from the word itself it is dry and dry and then mix mix is like it's a mixture of cement sand and it can be any filler mixture of cement filler and additives and it remains in a dry dry state because it reaches to the our customer in the dry state or the end user in the dry state and where we add water to it and then it becomes a wet mortar after that so it, that is what the dry mix is and the polymer as we all know polymer it's an combination uh, it's a reaction between the monomers and then where it forms a polymer so our polymer basically is a, a combination of two monomers so that is one is ethylene and other is vinyl acetate so ethylene is basically is a very flexible uh, monomer and vinyl acetate is a very hard and rigid uh, monomer so these two undergo a chemical reaction it's an uh, under pressure so it becomes vinyl acetate ethylene so vinyl acetate ethylene is a uh, polymer so we use in the in all our uh, applications so this polymer 
here what i am showing is the basic chemistry which is a copolymer copolymer means we have two monomers that is vinyl uh, vinyl acetate and ethylene and not necessary that it has to be only two uh, two monomers so it can be ter polymer like it can have any other combination to improve the performance of the polymer so the major advantage of using these two monomers it's it's uh, one is very flexible and when other is a very rigid so now you can play with the combination of these two monomers and which will help us to get whatever the polymer we want for example if we want an hard polymer we can increase the percentage of vinyl acetate in the formulation so that we get a hard polymer and if we need a very flexible polymer then we can increase the percentage of ethylene in the reaction so that we can get a flexible polymer so based on the requirement for example for some applications we would need a hard polymer and for some applications we would need a very flexible polymer to give you an example if it's a waterproofing membrane so it should have very good elasticity and then it must be able it, it should be very flexible so in such cases we use a flexible polymer and in which the percentage of ethylene is high but why we are using only these two monomer only these two monomers when we have so many monomers in the world so the basic reason why we use these monomers is one is so the inherent the uh, the inherent property of ethylene is that it is flexible so the polymer will remain since it's a inbuilt property or the inherent nature of ethylene it will remain flexible for long term so it will remain its property otherwise when we use other chemistries for example if i say serine acrylic chemistry serine acrylic both are hard and it can give a flexibility to a certain extent so in order to enhance the flexibility of a serine acrylic what we do is that we add some plasticizers which will enhance its flexibility but with time when it flexibility enhances what happens is these plasticizers will move on to the surface and with time they evaporate because the usual tendency of plasticizer is to migrate onto the surface and then with time they evaporate so once they evaporate from the surface what it happens is it becomes very rigid while in vae chemistry what happens is because the ethylene is a monomer and its inherent property is to remain flexible so it will remain flexible for a longer duration otherwise i can say it will remain flexible for how long we that it remains in the matrix of the cement motor so that is uh, why we use this chemistry and that is the background of the monomers coming to uh, why we actually wanted to have dispersible polymer powder is in the beginning in the beginning for example before 1950s all the systems used to be two component system so where we need to have cement mix motor which will be packed in a bag and we you add water at site in addition to water we used to add dispersion at site so we used to two component means one component is dry mix motor here what we can see is a dry mix motor is one component and the other component is dispersion so what these are the two components and then we mix it and make the wet motor but what used to happen with this technology is like it is very difficult to uh, transport dispersion because dispersion is a liquid and there used to be a lot of problems of spillage and even the guidelines there are stringent guidelines to uh, transport dispersion and then it is not easy so when in 1950s one of our uh, walker scientist when he was having a, a cup of coffee then he uh, noticed that people are uh, making instant coffees just by adding water you take milk and then you add a coffee powder to it and then instant coffee is ready but that is not the case in the two component system because it it comes in two pack system like one dispersion differently and uh, motor differently you mix them and then make motor so that idea was that is that idea where he started it and then trying to uh, innovate some powder which can be packed in a single system like everything will be added in a single system and then we add water to it and then it becomes a wet motor so taking that as an inspiration then walker have done lot of research and in 1950s like 53 or 57 walker patented this technology of uh, spray drying this dispersion into powder form and now we have this dispersible polymer powder where we can mix with the motor with the cement and sand and pack it and at site we can only add water to it and then make a wet motor and which makes is very uh, easy for the construction applications so what are the applications we use this polymer 
so when we add water to it what this happens is this water is this this polymer is uh, water soluble in nature and then it uh, dissolves in water and then it becomes a polymer again like dispersion again and then it contributes its properties so what are the applications in which we use this uh, polymer is we uh, make powder paints see uh, why we have to make powder paints many many have this question sir we have uh, paints so which is available in liquid so why do we have to make powder paints uh, we don't have this issues in india but in abroad what happens is we we spend lot of money in transporting liquid liquid in the sense uh, literally water because every paint has water in it and transport we pay so much for transporting this paints from one place to another because it has water in it so and the water content is around 40% for example 30 to 40% if you take paint 30% of is water so why do we have to pay so much and then uh, transport transport naming it as paint and the where we are transporting 30% of it is in, is a, a water so that is why uh, we have in a globe we have called a powder paints where the dispersion goes into it where this uh, dispersible polymer goes into it and this polymer they add water to it and then make paint and then apply other is skim coat skim coat the other name of skim coat is putty putty is a very familiar application in india so whenever the plaster when we when we do construction once our walls are ready like ready with uh, plaster we apply putty onto it and this putty is nothing but a skim coat which is a very thin application and uh, the if you look at the formulation of skim coat it is white cement and it has uh, filler filler is nothing but calcite or dolomite and if you have to apply these two on to such a thin extent it is not polymer if you don't use a polymer so our major cons consumer of polymer is uh, putty manufacturers for example jk ultratech so they all of them purchase polymer from our uh, from walker and then they make putty and they make uh, many other applications out of it so if you look at the consumption of our polymer so major chunk of it goes to a skim coat which is nothing but putty so that is one application and other application is plaster renders and plasters uh, which are uh, nothing but uh, a sand coarse sand based application and uh, we can make it uh, why do we need this plaster is now the the normal way of using it is you mix sand and cement and then apply and oh, even then we will have lot of issues like cracking issues on plaster and then we have to cure it regularly and if you shift from there to uh, polymer modified uh, plasters so you don't have to do any uh, curing one advantage of it and then it can be applied very quickly and the workability will be very good so that is one application we use and i don't go much into the detail and other other major application is a tile adhesive and which will i will also show you in the next slide uh, why tile adhesive is important how polymer has transformed the tile adhesive in indian market so if you look at see all these application what you see on the left the, the it's a basic formulation the basic formulation is it will have filler otherwise aggregates in terms of uh, plaster skim coat we call it as fillers and the filler we we have different fillers for example in some applications we use sand if it is plaster we use dolomite and uh, calcite if it is skim coat so filler is a major chunk of it and uh, coming to binders we use cement lime or gypsum as a binder binder and we add polymers so walker produce this polymers and then we supply in the market and they use this polymer into this formulation and they use some uh, additives which will help them to improve the workability or uh, to remove some if in some applications we have to remove air in some of the applications we have to entrap air air entraining agents we use in some cases we may have to retard the setting of cement so all these additives we use in this combination and we make this dry mix applications so this is a small video which will help you to understand what uh, exactly polymer does in the cement matrix so this uh, video doesn't have any audio i will try to explain you so these are the gray uh, particles in this are the cement particles and the these are the brown color or the sand particles and the other uh, other thing what you see now is is the water is coming into in contact with the cement and sand and then you see this crystals forming so it is undergoing hydration and then it is making a matrix when it comes in contact with water and this is how the usual uh, cement mortar is 
and when it is when it is only cement mortar whenever there are stresses what it happens is the matrix is very brittle and then it cracks and then it breaks so this is what usually happens if it is not modified with uh, polymer and then this is why we see a lot of cracks so in the similar formulation now the uh, orange color what you see here or the yellow color i don't know exactly how it is visible to you all there so this is a polymer so when it comes into contact with water so it gets dissolved in the matrix and what it forms is it forms a matrix inside it forms a mesh like matrix or a net like matrix inside the mortar and it undergoes the reaction now when this mortar comes in contact with any uh, any of the stresses so what it happens is it binds it and then it keeps it intact so that is how uh, polymer modified mortar is advantageous and that is why we are we need to use uh, polymer in the cement matrix or in the polymer like why we need to use a polymer in cement cement mortars otherwise or cement based applications so like i mentioned uh, we have multiple applications and uh, where do we uh, where do we uh, use this application in construction so for example let this is an example where when we are constructing uh, we do waterproofing so we use polymers in waterproofing and whenever there are any cracks in the concrete we use polymers to repair them and whenever we have to prime the surface priming in the surface like when we have to use multiple uh, layers and multiple coats on the surface for example we do first to plastering on plastering we apply a skim coat on skim coat we apply paint so there are multiple layers that is coming onto the wall so if these layers have to be uh, well in contact with each other so what we do is that in between we apply primer primers so we have primers so this is one application and when we apply tiles we use a uh, tile adhesives and when we are plastering which is other word of plastering is rendering external plasters so we use uh, polymers in it and then when, when whenever we have to when we need a self leveling uh, compound self leveling compound is a self leveling floor or a cementitious floor in that applications we use uh, self leveling polymers in self leveling compound so at the various stages of construction we use polymers in construction industry so what it does is like it improves uh the performance of mortar or the performance of concrete and it is makes it very easier for the application and it enhances the durability of mortar so that it remains uh durable for long time and it also helps us to meet the standards which are there for each application so that it meets and it also helps in uh, maintaining the sustainability what happens is if we don't use polymers we tend to use more of cement more of uh, fillers in some of the applications and this when we use polymers that will help us to save a lot of this material so that also promotes sustainability in one way so this is why where we use and why do we need uh, polymers so this is an interesting application which will uh, make us understand why we need polymer and then how polymer can transform like the technology okay so i have i'm using poly so see so here is a video so this video has only background music so he is using the thin bed method to lay the tiles and the thick bed method to lay the tiles so thick bed method is a usual traditional method that we see where we apply a mortar and the surface on the substrate whether it is on the wall or whether it on the ground what we do is that we prepare a cement sand mortar and then we paste it on the tile or on the ground and then we just keep it and thin bed application is where we modify the cement with uh, polymers and we use a notch travel to use it to make it a thin bed and then we apply we adhere tiles onto it you can see how drastic how difference is the technology and then how it is advantageous so kevin can someone help me whether this uh, video is uh, playing or whether it is not so it's playing sir yes it's playing okay fine there are two people they are uh, they are applying uh, tiles using thin bed method and using a thick bed method oh 
the video is not playing i guess it is sorry i don't know why it is not playing uh, it is fine you can see my screen right yes sir yes sir fine uh, give me a minute what i will do is that i will play video from my uh, screen so that we if it is not playing in the from there what i can do is because if i don't show you that video then it will not be uh, helpful to understand how good it is the thinbit technology and how and what are the advantages that we get out of, out of it mm. sorry but then some glitch because of the glitch which i am unable to play that uh, video oh i am even unable to find uh, find that video so that i can play from my screen Fine. Can you all see this video now? Yes, sir. Yeah, fine. On this nine square meter wall, which is divided into two equal halves of 4.5 square meters each, with the thin bed method on the left and the thin bed method on the right. I could not play that video, but I'm playing another video which is equivalent to it. The two workers start with the left side using the thin bed technique. That's the mortar bed is only three to five millimeters thick. They first apply a simple wall troweling compound. This is to level up. Is audio like, uh, is it audible? Yes, sir, it's audible. Application of the wall troweling compound takes 52 minutes. So, this is a plaster wall, so where they are applying a plaster onto it, and then they have finished the plastering in such a very short time because it's in a polymer modified uh, plaster. On the other side, he is the worker is trying to make and sand, which is which is not actually see. This is how the polymer modified motor looks. And now see, this is the thin bed technology where he uses a polymer modified motor to apply tiles, and then just how we have to apply the motor is you apply the motor with a travel and then you draw notches and you back you do a back battering onto the tile and when we need to do this back battering is only when the size of the tiles is very big and that is now it is done so tiling is tiling work is done so it's very simple and you can transform the technology very uh, easy like uh, transform the tiling technology and with a thin bed method on the other high on the other side so if same workers they are trying to construct wall tiles with a thick bed method so if it's a dry board if we need a plaster what we have to do is that we have to first uh, need a mortar which has to be prepared and it is very difficult because we don't know how much sand to use how much cement to use it doesn't come in uh, bags so people use random cement sand and then you try to fix it on the tile while another presses the tile against the wall bonded in place the key factor of the thick bed method is constant and you would have seen you would have noticed how much easier it is and other side how much material is being uh, used if it is a thick bed motor and then see it comes off very easily Also takes a lot of time. The two 
workers need a total of two hours and 12 minutes to install the tiles using the thick bed technique. See, uh, in thin bed technique, they took only 12, half an hour to construct that wall. On the other hand, they took two minutes, two hours to construct the same wall. And even if you do and see the uh, strength them, like check the strength of it, how good they are. Usually, we will not be able to cure this motor because the motor goes under, uh, behind the tiles. See, and then see, there is no bonding at all. And if it is on the thin, you won't be able to even remove it because the polymers has such good addition that it bonds very well with the wall. So even if you do the tensile addition test, if it is uh, polymer modified, we will have a very high tensile addition of 0.9. And if it is a thin, thick band, the addition is very minimal, which is 0.2 or 0.3. So you, you can see the advantages that we get uh, when we use uh, thin bed and thick bed, the time is reduced, the consumption of material is reduced, and even the strength will increase. And these are the advantages what we get when we use a polymer modified motor. So we'll go back to our presentation. So I don't have to uh, read this content here because if we have understood very clear from the video that the product quality is going to remain cons consistent because it is not prepared at site, it is comes in packing and uh, the material consumption will be reduced you will be able to do a lot of like you can lay a lot of tiles in a very short time so all these are the differences that we get see for example if we have to lay a very big tile now the size of tiles have increased drastically and for example there's a tile of size four cross four feet cross four feet and even four feet cross eight feet tiles are available in the market so if we have to lie such tiles it is not possible to do with just cement uh, sand motor mix. So we might we are forced to add polymers to it. So we'll uh, move ahead and then see uh, this is another interesting video. This is another interesting video which will make us understand why we see a lot of damages on tile. So for example, if we have a tile in our house, if something falls on it, it breaks. And why it actually breaks? Because we have used uh, one reason is we have used uh thick bed method other way is the the motor is not completely spread on the tile now if it is a polymer modified motor and if it is a not polymer modified motor how this tile adhesives react you can see so here is a uh, ball which is of weight very heavy weight which is falling on the tile And you, you would have seen in homes, like whenever we have tile flooring, when something falls on the tile, when a heavy object falls on tile, it breaks. And people feel that since heavy, heavy material has fallen on the tile and tile is uh, a ceramic material, it will obviously break. So it is not because of failing because it's a brittle material, because we haven't applied it properly. See, if it is without any polymer modified, you can see the tile has shattered. And if it is polymer modified to a certain extent, it is intact, but only certain part of it has broken. And now you can see when we add further add the polymer uh, to the tile adhesive, what it happens. See, it doesn't break. So as we increase the percentage of polymer in the tile adhesive, and then when we use that motor, and when we use that motor, that will enhance the performance of our floors. Now, why I have paused the video here is one thing what we have to understand here is when the percentage of polymer is zero in the motor, it has shattered, the tile has shattered like what we see in our homes. And as we increase the percentage at two percentage, it has like a part of tile has broken. When it is six percentage, it is well in intact. Now it is 12 percentage. See, here the ball, the, the weight which has fallen on the tile is not rebounding. It has just fallen on it and then it is absorbing the complete shock. Here it is so strong that even the weight is, uh, is able to uh, take a rebound on it. See, the same ball, it is bouncing back and it doesn't bounce back here. So that helps us to understand how important it is to use polymers in some of the applications. So here. I'm giving you one application as an example to make you understand how important it is to use polymer in our dry mix applications. So this is, and 
uh, here i would like you like to give some overview in what are the application where we use polymers for example uh, waterproofing membranes so in swimming pools there's a lot of water that comes in contact with the tiles and there's a tile grout and if we don't do waterproofing properly then all the water goes waste other example that i can give you is a canal so when water is transported in canal system so when we leave water from one end if that water has to reach us to the other end it water there should not be leakage of water and if there is leakage of water so what the quantity of water what we get on the other end of the canal is very negligible so what we will we'll lose lot of water because of the water seepages so we are bound to do waterproofing in some of the applications so when we have to do waterproofing so what we do is that we use polymers and then it can be even liquid polymers or it can be even dry polymers like powder polymers which will uh, make sure that the water is not leaking from the system so that is one one application like i have mentioned uh, like given the example of putty uh, the other name is skim coat and where we uh, all of us use when the when the house is under construction so we build walls and then we apply plaster and then we use skim coat and it is nothing but cement is what we use in the formulation and if it has to be applied such thin and such smoothly so it is only because it is possible only because of polymers and other is when, whenever we have to do concrete repair and why we need concrete repair like con uh, polymers in concrete repair is so the old concrete is already uh, has underwent reaction and that there is not going to be any shrinkage in this old concrete but when new concrete come in contact with the old concrete it has to bond well so if it has to bond well there has to be a proper addition between the new concrete and old concrete so polymer is uh, the medium which will promote the enhance enhancen like which enhance the addition between the old concrete and new concrete make sure that it remains in contact so that is for one reason where we use uh, this polymers and self leveling compound self leveling compounds are the floors where we use mortar to make a floor and we just have to pour the concrete like pour the mortar onto the substrate and then we level the floor like the the man is doing it here and this mortar has to be very high abrasion because there is lot of load that is coming onto the floor and it has to be very wearing resistance and then it has to be designed according to the loading that is going to come onto it so they can for example uh, if we are using it in the warehouses where the loading is very high so we have to use the increase the thickness and then use more percentage of polymer and we have to design accordingly so there are thin membrane like thin uh, self leveling compounds and thick leveling thick self leveling compounds and other application is micro concretes where we use uh, polymers in them and the plaster plaster you can ask me a question sir we can just sim simply mix cement and sand in the uh, site and this is how we have been doing it from ages so what is the issue and then why do we have to move to polymer modified mortar so when we move to polymer modified plaster what happens is we will have a very good uh, addition onto the substrate other other interesting thing is see in the olden days we were using bricks of red clay bricks which has very high absorption water absorption and uh, it will be able to when we uh, apply plaster onto to such substrates it will absorb that water and then it makes sure that it is intact with the wall with the brick so no, that is not the case now because even the bricks have changed from uh, red clay bricks now we are getting uh, clay bricks insulation bricks and calcium silicate bricks there are variety of bricks that are available in the market for example the most widely used now this days is a uh, lightweight concrete uh, blocks and adhering or adhering of uh, normal cement sand onto that blocks is very difficult so that is how, that is why we need to shift from uh, normal plaster to cement like polymer modified plaster and it also ensures that so this in other interesting aspect of this uh, this polymer is there are polymers which are available with hydrophobicity hydrophobicity is meaning like it helps you in water repellency so if you apply plaster onto the wall and then if you spray water onto it it doesn't absorb any of the water so that is other advantage of moving it to using a polymer modified plaster so this is what i was talking about these days we are using ac blocks and 
AC blocks construction wall with AC block and using cement sand mortar is very uh, difficult. So now everybody is moving to jointing block jointing mortars and which has little percentage of polymer in it. And other one is a tile grout. So tile grout, uh, the main purpose of tile grout is to not to allow water. So because in bathrooms we have lo used lot of water and tile grout should not allow water to penetrate. So if it doesn't have to allow water to penetrate, if it's a normal cement sand, what is, see, if you see in the uh, traditional way, what they do is that they take cement, they make white cement, and then they mix water into it, and then they'll apply it by finger. So that is what, that is how they do it. Because, but this is not, this is not uh, waterproof. What happens is water penetrates underneath this, uh, through this grout, and then tiles will start to come off. So the, if you use polymer modified, what it happens is it reduces uh, the water absorption capacity of the grout and doesn't allow water to penetrate so that the the tiles will remain intact and then it will enhance the durability of these tiles. And other is ETICS. ETICS, we don't use this system uh, in India. It's an in, uh, external thermal insulation composite system where what we do is that after constructing a wall, we use some polystyrene foam or some insulation material so that it uh, insulates the building. And on that insulation material, we uh, use mortar. And on that mortar, we can apply paint. Otherwise, we can apply some texture plaster. So this is a composite system. In this composite system, this insulation material has to be adhered to the wall using a cement mortar. And that is not possible. If it is not polymer modified, you cannot ad adhere. For example, this even thermocol we use as an insulation material. So you can adhere thermocol with a polymer modified motor so that is that is how it is going to enhance the tensile addition of the motor and uh, we can also use it for primers primers is like like i was mentioning when multiple layers come on one onto the other what happens is we need to make sure that these layers are bonding very properly so that there is no unsoundness between these layers in such cases we use uh, primers and we also, there are polymers where we can just have to apply, uh, just take this polymer, add water to it, and then apply it onto the wall. What you, you can use it as a whiteboard. Even the wall, you can use it as a whiteboard because you will get strain resistance and then hydrophobic resistance, which will easy to clean and which doesn't allow water to penetrate into it. See, here's a test that we conduct in our lab where we have used multiple uh, eateries, we can say, or the ketchup mustard that regularly we use in our kitchen which is generally fall on the wall and we have tried it if it is not treated with uh, any polymer what happens is the strains will remain onto it so this is this is cleaned after 15 minutes is cleaned after one hour it's clean after 24 hours so it will strains will remain on such as such so if it is a treated wall so if you just and treatment is just simple you have to take polymer, add water to it, and then just apply it on the surface. So when you treat it with polymer, so you will not strain even after 24 hours. You pour some something onto this wall, onto the floor, and then you clean it after 24 hours, and you will be able to clean it very easily. So this is some of where where some of the applications where we use polymers. And coming to uh, functionality of these polymers is like it enhances the mechanical properties of the motor. It enhances uh, the mechanical properties we can say like flexural strengths it increases because polymer uh, is flexible in nature so when we add polymer to it it enhances the flexibility of the motor and uh, it will in increase like uh, workability of the motor where you will be able to apply it for use the motor for a long time and you will not need to use any of the super plasticizers and then it provides hydrophobicity is nothing bad water repellency which will remain for a long time and it will improve the durability of the motor. So there are many benefits. So uh, today for you people, what I have done is I have covered all these applications and just giving you a view where we see like what are the applications we use polymers. So in each and every application, there are standards, there are testing procedures. For example, if I take skim coat, we have Indian standard 17545, which gives the minimum requirements of skim coat. What should be the tensile addition strength? What should be the pot life of the strength? What should be the minimum cement in the formulation? What should be the minimum uh, polymer in the formulation? 
so everything has a standard testing procedures where we have to evaluate each of this application so we are not getting all those things into details today uh, like every application will take a lot of time for example if i take uh, tile adhesive there is a standard in indian standard for tile adhesive which is 15477 which tells us like what type of tile adhesive have to be used for bathrooms if it is bathroom because bathroom is a different area because there is a lot of water is going to be there it is wet all the time so what should be the tile adhesive what kind of tile adhesive should be used in bathroom if it is a normal floor residential floor for hall otherwise what should be uh, the tile adhesive that we need to use for example if we are using wall on uh, tiles on a drywall drywall like gypsum board or any drywall application what should be the tile adhesive and if the size of tile is small what should be the tile adhesive and if the tile is very big what should be its requirements so every every application has a standard you can go through the standards i i have also mentioned some of the standards you can read them which will also help you to understand uh, why polymer has to be used and these are the, i'm just giving you an overview of some of the application where we use uh, polymers and what is the uh, importance of using polymer in cement and how polymers will change the mortar see here is another uh, i i would like to end my presentation with this uh, video where this an uh, heavy the following wall. film shows an impact test on an external thermal insulation composite system a 3 kg steel ball falls from a height of 3.85 meters onto a test specimen yielding an impact energy of 110 joules The base coat mortar of the specimen was made with Vinipass 5044N polymer powder. Before testing the sample, we dropped the ball by way of comparison onto a conventional external thermal insulation composite system comprising a mineral wool board with a simple base coat mortar and a conventional mineral finish coat. As you can clearly see, this specimen has a chance against the enormous impact of 110 joules. The ball goes through the layers of standard plaster and penetrates the insulation panel. The high-speed camera will reveal whether the system enhanced with Vinipass 5044N and double base coat reinforcement can withstand the impact energy. with the standard composite system in the right half of the picture the enhanced system special structure can withstand an impact energy of 110 joules there is no sign of any damage see this gives us gives us the importance of polymer a ball is falling from such a huge height and which is creating an uh, potential energy of 110 joule the ball is completely getting into this uh, the sponge otherwise the wool which is there in the bottom and here it doesn't it is able to absorb all the energy that is required so so that is what the impact of polymer is in the dry mix applications so why i am presenting uh, what i would like to emphasize here is uh, we study in btech we study a lot about mortar and uh, concrete so there are many other applications beyond that uh, where many people are working for you were to create some interest of polymers in you is what how i have designed this presentation so that's it from my side i will be very interested to hear from you people now i have been speaking from one hour so you people can ask me if you have any questions or uh, uh, if you have any doubts or if you any clarifications that you need you can ask me sir why do we need such heavy huge impact uh, strength on the membranes all these questions if you have any anything in your mind please feel free to unmute yourself and then you can ask your questions thank you sir and uh, participants if you want to ask any questions or queries you can please uh, unmute your mic and ask or you can post it in the chat box yeah, you can even post in the chat box so this presentation would have been great if it was uh, uh, like in person but unfortunately because of the scenario uh, we had to do it in uh, virtual so next time hopefully we'll uh, see and then we'll do it if possible sure sir please yeah and 
sir apart from uh, impact test do you have any other test sir uh, to check yeah one test is like we can check the tensile addition impact test is why i am showing it is here is like just to uh, make people understand that it can polymer can absorb such high uh, energy and this is not the only test we do and there are many other tests for example we do tensile addition test tensile addition test for it on tiles if i are using tile adhesive we need we would definitely would like to understand how well the tile is adhering onto the substrate onto the wall so we do tensile addition test uh, for example if you are take uh, skim coat like putty application we see uh, how well it is adhering one way like tensile addition test other way is like we see choking test see if you take your hand and rub on skin on uh, any wall we'll see a lot of dry particles that is coming onto the uh, onto our hand so if it is happening that way and if you apply a very high quality paint onto such a wall it will not withstand because even the paint will fail because the surface is not good so we do choking resistance test and we do a paint adhesion test on skim coat so based on the application we have multiple tests that we do and all these tests are simple tests and even we can refer to the standards which will uh, help us to understand what are the different tests that we do for different applications thank you thank you sir yeah and the participants if you want to ask any other questions you can ask uh... see if no one is asking question i'll take it i will uh, take someone's name and then i'll ask, ask them to uh, interact with me sure sir <laughs> I guess people will get afraid of it and then leave the meeting. <laughs> yes. Sir. See, Gopal. I don't know who is Gopal. Uh, he has left the meeting already. Yes. Like, if you people, uh, if you are, uh, say, sir, if you are not familiar, you can even speak in Tamil to me. It's not a matter because I did my bachelor's and master's in Tamil Nadu, so I can speak in Tamil as well. You can, uh, if somebody wants to speak in Tamil, also that is welcome. They are not speaking actually. Uh... Fine, no problem. If if, uh, uh, if nobody is asking question, I'll uh, I'll take it as such. People have understood it very proper, <laughs> nicely. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for so much for your uh, session, sir. Sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Most welcome. I will be happy to. Uh, do these sessions because uh, i would like to create interest in people and then see how important it is how civil engineering plays role in all these applications and then how we can enhance our knowledge and if i if i can create some interest in people that is what even i am looking for as a student even i was a student uh, i think you all the students should thank your uh, faculty because uh, making this happen is not easy getting our time and uh, like you people are engaging with all these people and seeing what is happening around the globe and get, making sure that you people have little interesting interest in what you study and then how it is useful in the future so you people should all all of you all the students should be very thankful uh, to your faculty people they are putting their efforts in making us making us available to you people thank you for your kind words sir thank you yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh thank you sir thank you most thank most, you so most welcome ma'am sorry ma'am uh, want to say any few words ma'am i don't know sir uh, ma'am is but well, no problem yeah he's busy actually uh, no, okay, no sir no thank issues. you thank you sir i will convey it to a ma'am sir yeah yeah thank you thank you sir most welcome bye so participants uh, uh, so thank you so much participants everyone faculty students for uh, for your active participation and uh,
Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, thank our uh, HOD, Dr. R. Kumuda, Madam, Department of uh, Civil Engineering, HOD, for organizing such an informative uh, a seminar. And also, I want to thank our principal management for their continuous support and encouragement. And uh, on behalf of our institution, our uh, SBC, uh, special thanks to our speakers who spend their valuable time and sharing their knowledge and experience on various emerging topics, uh, starting from Mr. Venugopal, uh, Dr. Raghuram sir, Dr. V. Rajesh Kumar sir, and uh, Dr. Rajesh Sekhan sir, Mr. Saundara Rajan sir today, and uh, now uh, Mr. Mughal Surajuddin sir. Uh, thanks to them, and uh, an artful thanks to all uh, faculty, students, and other participants who participated actively and paid attention throughout the, all the sessions. Uh, once again, I want to thank every one of you to, uh, for your active participation. Sure. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, students and faculty members. And the uh, feedback link is posted in the chat box. You can fill the feedback. Yes, it is posted.